Hey, how's it going guys? This is your boy Hayes and today I'm gonna do the melee guide for Unholy. Now guys, I like to play the AoE cleave spec, but I did find out that there is of course, you know, a melee spec and I wanted to make a video on that for you guys. This spec is also used and is obviously best for PvE DPS. I managed to pull like 160k on an end boss in Heroic, just absolutely insane numbers. That's about as high as I got with Frost too. So I mean, they're both really up there if you're able to burst correctly. So let me go ahead and jump into this guide with Unholy and show you the melee uh, talent spec guys. Let's go over talents. Obviously, you gotta know what you're using before you can do anything, guys. So the level 56 talent, the only changes, and I'm gonna go over the main changes, of course, is from Ebon Fever to Bursting Swords, which allows you to get more single target slash AoE DPS. Um, it's also going to get up your single target damage, uh, but you're gonna lose some of that AoE cleave damage like you get from Battlegrounds from using Ebon Fever because you're not gonna get, rake in a lot of that AoE pressure. But that's fine because a lot of fights you're not really relying on that much dot pressure for PvE fights a little bit, but not nearly as much as your rotation. So you're gonna go with Bursting Swords. You're still gonna use uh, Epidemic to pull in that AoE pressure. It's still amazing to use in PvE settings if there's more than three targets. It works. It hits slightly harder than Bursting Swords, but still they both hit you know around the same area. So it's just a gnarly AoE situation all the time for an unholy dk when he's in melee range the other thing i like to use at level 58 is unholy frenzy remember we're in melee range at this point i like to use this if i was going pvp melee i'd probably go with uh, clawing shadows still just because of the range on it but unholy frenzy is great for pve when you increase your attack speed so you can actually use some abilities of course faster generate runic power generate runes faster and you know it's just a better rotation in general and of course the level 60 talent i'm going with sledge because, you know, he's going to pump out a little more damage. He looks cool. I mean, honestly, he just matches better. Look at him. He's, he's sexy. And, of course, in PvE, the other two don't really matter nearly as much. I mean, slowing could at some point, maybe, but not really. I mean, if, uh, besides that, I mean, we could probably take uh, the level 75 talent. It really doesn't matter. I'd probably go with uh, Lingering Apparition for PvE. Just to make it so you can move faster and get out of things. Um, but as for the level 90 talent... Um, I'm still using, uh, Infected Claws, but I'm thinking I'd probably go with Necrosis for the single target damage now that I'm actually looking at it a little more. Causing damage with your Desco, it'll cause your next Scourge Strike to deal 35% increased damage, and of course that Scourge Strike is where you're procking your AoEs off of. So for single target melee DPS, I'm probably going to go with Necrosis, I'd have to say. Um, Infected Claws is really good, I'd say, for that ranged fight, but I'd say I'm definitely going to go with Necrosis for melee. Alright, so you see this recount here. This was actually the recount, uh, I'll show you here. Um, on Skullock, he was a heroic boss inside of, um, uh, I can't remember what instance that was. You guys will probably know. And the fight only lasted, like, 20 seconds, or no, let me see here. Let's do some figuring. Almost, almost about, yeah, roughly, whatever, we'll just go with that time. Anyways, it lasted really short. Like, he went to blow us back, and of course he didn't get to the blowback mode. He died before throwing us across the map. And of course, level 100 talent, I'm going to go with Dark Arbiter, just because it deals absolutely insane damage. It's like crazy with uh, cooldowns. So let's go ahead and jump into, let's see, I think macros we got to cover. we got to cover some macros. What's going on here? Well, right now I have, like, my uh, Dark Transformation, my Dark Arbiter separately. I like those to proc separately. But other than that, I've got, like, a main cooldown proc, throwing out my Legendary Ring, of course, Badge of Victory, and Strength Potions just to generate that proc damage. I mean, that's about all I need for PvE when it comes to the melee rotation. Um, as for dealing damage, what you're going to want to do with this rotation, it really doesn't have that hard of a rotation. Since there's three adds here, we'll probably be able to do quite a bit of damage. Um, first off, I'll just show you like how much damage you can deal. I'm not really sure how much we can do on these training dummies, but we'll figure it out here. All right, so what you want to do first, of course, is spread your dots on the target. It's going to be the best thing you want to do. Then you want to come in and you want to slap on two festering strikes. Now, these festering strikes are going to stack up, of course, your festering wounds. That's when you're going to blow your maximum cooldowns, throw out your major cooldowns, and then go into rupturing those or bringing in your epidemics for that AoE pressure. Now you can see our DPS skyrocketing up as we're using those abilities. It's hitting about uh, about 84k right now, 92k, 95, 105k. Um, we hit 109, 
143k. I mean, this is good DPS. This is unholy burst in melee range. I'd have to say, you're going to get less survivability playing this spec in PvP, but in PvE, this is definitely going to be the way to go. I mean, you can see the numbers consistently just being up there for this uh, AoE cleave. So that was how to maximize and generate burst the fastest. Uh, so we kind of covered that first. So let's go over general rotation now. So general rotation is about the same way. You, you apply your dots, you come in, you spam Epidemic, and you're AoEing multiple targets. And then, of course, you go into the melee rotation, in which you hit Festering Runes to generate your uh, Festering Wounds. Festering Strike to generate Festering Wounds. And then once these are kind of stacked up, you just start exploding them with Scourge Strike, and it applies the AoE damage. And that's going to be your melee rotation. And whenever Epidemic comes up, you're going to use your Epidemic over your Scourge Strikes. And then go into your Scourge Strikes. Once you've run out of Festering Wounds, you reapply your Festering Wounds with your Festering Strikes. And again, that's going to be your consistent AoE. You just rotate between those cooldowns, uh, basically use... Um, not too hard of rotation, I'd say, but once you get it down and you have eight stacks and you start rupturing them, I I'm sure it's going to be a pretty easy rotation to flop back and forth between. But as for, um, that major cooldown burst, if you guys didn't understand it, you know, go in, proc your abilities, get your diseases on the target, maybe stack up a couple festering strikes, and then throw out your, uh, dark transformation, throw out your dark arbiter, throw out your cooldowns which is like rings potions things like that and then go into your rotation of using epidemics and go into your rotation of using scourge strikes and you're going to end up getting your dps of course like hundreds of thousands just like you saw me doing uh even i mean just the ring raw percentage damage put me up to 100k and before it procced and then after it procced it hit like 140 some k and that's with three targets, so that's pretty good DPS. I wouldn't say it has the strength that Frost has in the initial burst, but it definitely has a bit better longevity. Of course, if there's multiple targets, Unholy's going to be absolutely insane, probably even skyrocket above uh, you know, just about any class if there's multiple targets. Um, that's going to be it for the uh, rotation, I'd have to say.